So there's never a dull moment in the cab aggregator space in India where Ola and Uber compete. Um, the latest is that the Karnataka Transport Department uh, just earlier this month uh, has released a new cab aggregator policy that feels like it's taking us back to uh, the pre-Ola, pre-Uber era when you only had regular taxis by removing dynamic pricing and moving to a fixed price model. Um, now, there are multiple states with multiple cab aggregator policies. Um, Delhi has been trying to, for example, force everyone to use electric vehicles. Uh, but Karnataka is especially active and this is like, and this policy uh, is particularly odd. Uh, according to this policy, uh, cab rides are categorized into three tiers of pricing. Um, and the pricing is basically going to be based on uh, the price of the vehicle. Uh, so, for example, uh, for cars valued at less than rupees 10 lakhs, uh, the fare is fixed at rupees 100 for the first four kilometers um, with an additional rupees 24 per subsequent kilometer. Uh, whereas for vehicles that are in the 10 to 15 lakh range, um, they can charge 115 rupees for the initial four kilometers, uh, followed by rupees 28 per kilometer for uh, you know, high-end cars, um, and uh, sorry, uh, sorry, followed by 28 rupees per kilometer. For high-end cars um, exceeding 15 lakh in value, the starting fare is set at rupees 130 for four kilometers, with rupees 30 added for each additional kilometer. Now, these are there are also some extra charges. For example, there's a waiting charge of rupees one per minute after five minutes of waiting, and then there's a 10 percent surcharge for rides uh, between midnight and 6 a.m. Um, drivers are, uh, are also allowed to collect toll charges directly from passengers, uh, whereas earlier you used to pay via the app, it is built into the overall price. Uh, there is no fee for luggage up to 120 kilos, but there's a fee of rupees 7 per kg thereafter. So these changes basically come after a proposal um, submitted by the Tra Transport and Safety Commissioner last December uh, to basically fix the fares of city taxis and various types of taxis operating under multiple licenses, including the aggregator license. So to bring a single model uh, of or a single pricing model, um, like I said, Karnataka is particularly active with cab aggregator policies. Uh, Ola and Uber are both headquartered in Bangalore. Um, in 2023, the, you know, the aggregator carpooling services uh, under the, were basically under the, uh, the state government's radar with the government banning the use of uh, uh, vehicles with white number plates for commercial commute purposes uh, following a strike uh, by taxi driver associations in the state against such practices. Uh, before that, there was a ban on app-based auto rides uh, in 2022. The ban was then lifted, you know, but a 5% cap on auto aggregators uh, commission charges uh, were recommended uh, by the transport department, um, which was uh, basically in January 23, 23 uh, the Karnataka High Court uh, stayed that cap. Uh, so, you know, so here's Karnataka is very, very active in that sense. And here's how, how I see it, like the dynamic pricing, uh, which is being restricted over here, often known as surge pricing, basically adjusts fares in real time based on demand and supply and other factors. It's like this is what we learn in school. Uh, this is a model that's been praised for both ensuring like service availability during peak times, but it's also been criticized for its unpredictability and its potential to inflate costs unexpectedly. Um, surge pricing, in my opinion, is a feature, not a bug. Uh, like I mentioned, in economics in school, we've learned about demand and supply curves and how price basically uh, impacts demand and supply of services. And you reach a price equi equilibrium where demand meets supply. Um, and so, you know, uh, surge pricing kind of operates in a similar manner. Uh, for example, uh, surge pricing takes in uh, all kinds of data uh, for demands for cabs, uh, how many people are looking for cabs at that moment in time, the availability or supply in terms of, you know, how many cabs are in a particular area, 
um, and it figures out a price uh, where if there aren't enough cabs to meet the demand then the price goes up and it draws more vehicles into that towards that location because drivers will make more money because of that right so cab drivers are incentivized by higher prices to go to that location in the same way if the demand is low um, and more cabs are available uh, then the price drops uh, and that does two things one it gives consumers a cheaper ride if they get one uh, but it also drives cab drivers to where the price is higher so it's basic economics and and you know in theory uh, this is market determination of pricing um, in a sense both consumers and cab drivers benefit uh, uh, and this particularly works for late night because there were cab drivers who would operate late at night because they'd make more money now the internet and mobile association of india has argued that fixed fares might actually deter drivers from operating during peak hours uh leading to longer wait times and a potential decline in service availability during peak time because they'll be spe- they'll spend more time driving slowly in traffic in a sense right um and in that sense uh, uh of course there is an argument that surge pricing can also be manipulated and fixed by cab aggregators because there is no transparency in price determination uh for example a man and a woman stranded in the same location while it's raining in the middle of the night Uh, could if an aggregator wants be charged differently uh, for a cab to the similar location so uh, cab aggregators can do user specific pricing as well based on determination of how much someone might be willing to pay uh, for a cab based on all the data that they have about them for example they could have some very high end investment apps on their on their devices and th- can think that this person can is willing to pay more so sometimes surge pricing can be manipulated it can be exorbitant and in the past regulators have capped surge pricing to a certain percentage of the base fare like 2.3x uh, or 2.5x of the base fare but i don't think you should throw away surge pricing um, and the ima also says that these this new policy basically blurs a line uh, between app based services which use all of this data and traditional taxis contrary to the distinctions that were made in the motor vehicles amendment act in 2019 so it's kind of over like what's it why would one policy apply and not the other allowing cab drivers to take money directly for toll etc in my opinion is also problematic because it can lead to extortion um remember one of the reasons that uber and uh, that that ola and uber became popular was because you didn't have to go through the hassle of negotiation you still uh, have that problem in case of autos for example in bangalore um, when you try and take one uh, directly you know where they ask for let's say 200 rupees more or 500 rupees more sometimes and or 1.5x uh, when they know that there aren't enough alternatives or all those auto drivers together decide that this is how much more we will charge this move doesn't ha- help consumers it only allows the cab driver more flexibility to extort money um of course it isn't that cab drivers haven't had problems of their own uh, many have been stuck with loans that they can barely afford to pay um and platforms can themselves be quite ex- extractive and change revenue share uh, at will if you know when when uh, they were starting out they offered much higher incentives to cab drivers which drew all these cab drivers into the into the space they took loans they bought and and bought cars and they some of them have contemplated suicide because they haven't been able to afford to pay those loans so platforms work on the principle of maximizing fragmentation um and they monetize the aggregation of this fragmented ecosystem and they limit the negotiation ability of each individual player So in that sense drivers need to be protected and cab aggregators are in that position where these drivers are being treated as independent employee uh, like contractors but in fact they are employees because the platforms control how much money they can make but none of them really get the employee benefits that society or gives to employees um so this is a global debate right and these issues need to be addressed uh but these current changes that we are seeing uh in terms of fixed pricing basically harm consumers